laughs> it's all JP. <laughs> No, are no, you guys no, 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 at home no, no, no. already? <laughs> we are ready here. We have the prof with us. Uh, thank you for joining us. Prof Michelle Montaigne is with us. JP, thank you for joining us as yes. usual. This is Homefront. My name is Rome. And today is going to be another exciting episode because we have the official COVID-19, the official vaccine myth buster with us. <laughs> <laughs> Prof is known as that because this season we we busting all those myths and I'm gonna jump yes, right inside today, right? Bus. Because we have some myths to bust. <laughs> Professor uh, Michelle Monta is our immunologist. So when it comes to anything to deal with the, the COVID nineteen virus in terms of vaccines, for us she's the best person to talk to, right, she JP? Is. She is the woman. Right, right. The she woman. is the woman to yeah, talk to. Definitely. <laughs> so Prof, starting off one time, we have some myths that were submitted by some of our viewers, and the first set. It's a bit extreme, but let's go one time. Can the vaccine alter my DNA? No. No. Does it contain microchips that can track people? No. Is it activated by 5G? No again. <laughs> <laughs> boom, All right, boom, then, boom. There, there, you it, it, there you have it. There you have it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's go. I'm seeing here. Are children supposed to be able to fight off the virus easily? So then why give the vaccine to kids? Okay, there's no doubt that children seem to have much milder infection. Um, having said that, it's not to say that some children do not have severe infection. Certainly the figures I've seen from the United States where they've had about 2 million uh, proven cases of, of COVID-19 in children ages, and I'm talking the age group 5 to 11 now that um, about over 2,000 were hospitalized, over 8,000 were hospitalized, mm. and there were about 100 deaths. So it's not entirely without, um, that it's not to say that there cannot be mortality in that age group, but it is true to say that the vast majority of kids will have very mild infection. What we also know is that about 2,000 of those kids develop this MIS-C, yeah. which is this multi-system inflammatory condition, which um, um, JP could speak to in yeah. a lot more detail because in the Caribbean, I think Trinidad and Tobago has, been, has the second highest incidence no, of, highest. of the highest the incidence highest, yeah. of yeah. MIS-C yeah. following yeah. COVID-19. Yeah. What we also know from work that has been done in the UK that some of these kids who get COVID-19 very mild, that they develop long COVID yeah. and they are very fatigued. They cannot play their sport. They, uh, they have the, the COVID fog or the brain fog, yeah. and they, they cannot go back to school. And we're talking weeks into months, you know? Yeah. So I think that, that it is true, without doubt, most, the vast majority of kids um, are, do have very mild disease, but they can also transmit it. We know from the UK figures that the big increase that they have seen recently yeah. is because of schools and, and kids were taking it home. And so what you saw was that the highest levels were in the younger age group. When mm -hmm. you looked at them, they broke down the, um, who had COVID. Most of the kids were very mild. Then their parents, yeah. most, some of whom were still not vaccinated. Yeah. Mm. And the good thing was because they have such a high level of immunization, among the over 65s in the United Kingdom. They were very, they, the rise in that age group was far less, right, sure. really speaking to how, how protective the, vaccine, the vaccination program was for yeah. that age group. So I think to, to, to sum it up, yes, we definitely, uh, a disease is milder in kids to the vast, uh, in the vast majority of them. But to think of it as not being a deadly disease or fatal disease in that age group, is erroneous as well. And plus, people talk about wrong. They say that, you know, it's, it's less for the children. But to me, one child dying is one child dying too much. So yes. I don't want to have any child die at all. Yes. One of the other things we had, Prof, one of the other things that um, Rome was talking about, the myths. Persons ask, could, um, could the, the vaccine weaken my child's immune system? It's Rome, and we are here. We're chilling with the boys. We're liming with the kids. We're doing this all for the PED Cares Foundation. So we need you at home watching us to go donate, donate, donate. Head over to the pedcares.org and send that donation, whether it's via credit card, direct transfer, because we want to make sure that the kids of our pediatric emergency department get the best possible care that they can get, because we need to take care of the next generation, the future lies with the kids you already on three we go and say yeah one two three yeah. yay the pd cares foundation 
person's asks, could um, could the the vaccine weaken my child's immune system? Is that what you think? And the about answer that? to that is no. Mm. Yes, I, this is how it works. We still don't quite know why children seem to have milder COVID as a general rule. Sure, yeah. All right. So there have been a lot of, of ideas put forward, a lot of theories put forward. One of them is that maybe recent infection with other va other vaccines might actually be protective. Yeah. We certainly know that there's that sort of a protection. People who get measles, children who have been given measles vaccines in, in uh, the one study that comes to mind was one done in, done in Bangladesh where they have a lot of diarrheal disease and kids who got the measles vaccines actually had far fewer other kinds mm -hmm. of viral infections. All right. So there's the cross next, protection. So, so there was cross yeah, protection. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. the other thing too is that um, kids do tend to be more reliant, very young kids on their, what we call early immune response, the innate immune response. All right. So they, they respond respond far more uh, with that. It's more robust, more, it's, it's more it's stronger in a sense in them than perhaps in, in us. Mm -hmm. However, as they grow up, they become more adult in their responses and they're pushing towards, the, they, 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 they will develop, the, they will involve their late immune response, which is where we have the B cells and T cells and all the development of memory. Because that early immune response, which they seem to use more um, and, and are stronger in them, they, that doesn't develop memory, that doesn't develop memory. And when they bring in their later immune system, the T cells and the B cells, and make antibodies and, and make these other, uh, what we call fighting T cells, these actually work with the early, early immune response, the early immune system, right. and actually makes it better at what it does, right? right. right, right. And, and, and that's why we give kids things like MMR, mm -hmm. and we give things, kids things like polio. DPT, uh, we yeah, are polio. building yeah. so that later immune response, which will, will work. help build it, the it, immune it, system right. versus the, the weaker immune system. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in, in terms of autism, mm -hmm. I've heard yeah, a lot of know, people mention that, yeah, that yeah. maybe the vaccine could be causing autism in children. Well, the, my own grandson is actually autistic, and obviously I have read quite extensively on autism. And, and they, this was a myth concerning, I think it was the measles vaccines yeah. many years yeah. ago, mm -hmm. and that was, was, was sort of debunked, all right? Now, there's no doubt that if you have a one in roughly 60 kids developing autistic, mainly autism, mainly boys, they, it, it does speak to some sort of, of environmental influence, right? That's probably not genetic. But the reality is there's so many other things they've been thinking about. Mm -hmm. What about pre-existing infections in like herpes in the parent, mm -hmm. one or other parent? Mm -hmm. What about perhaps some of these kids had um, been, um, um, you know, delivered by cesarean and some of the drugs that they might have used, either yeah. painkillers or, you know, in the, 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 the um, could, anesthetic drugs, etc. Really, yeah. so, so there's so many other things. Yeah. So what I'm coming to is that the, the, the belief that vaccines cause autism generally has been debunked and that really there has not been a lot of substantial support for that. So to now link this to COVID vaccines, I, I, I would say is very premature. So no again. No, no, no again. No, 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 again. no, 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 and children, now I tell them, Rome, the thing is that most of the medications we use for adults, right? Um, we don't really do lots of research on children because you want to just extrapolate it so you don't have to expose children. So I tell them the same thing, that you don't want to have a, a prolonged thing because you want to have it where it's extrapolated from then. So what would you say to that, Prof, in terms of the, the, the defense that not enough research has been done with this COVID with vaccine the, with, with on the children? children. Yeah, yeah, because they say well, we roll it out to the kids, but we didn't test yeah. it. Well, yeah. they certainly still had to do work at clinical trials. So the Pfizer I've seen, and essentially what the Pfizer did was that they had, I'm, now I'm trying to pull the figures out of my head. Okay, so roughly what they did was they had about, um, let's say it was about 1,300 kids who were vaccinated, all right? We're talking 5 to 11. And they had about 600. So they were vaccinating two to everyone that got the control. They, they, mm -hmm. they, they, and they were monitoring them for the development of COVID infection. And they found that by doing this, that, that they, they, efficacy was the ability to prevent the development of infection in those that were vaccinated, those who were unvaccinated, that it, it decreased the likelihood of infection in the vaccinated by about 90.5%. All right. So that was enough research, I think. You know, yeah. Well, again, like everything else, I, they, they've had kids and they've done that. And I tell everybody, Trinidad is lucky. 
because we will get the benefit of all the work of all the vaccinations mm -hmm. that are done that will be done in kids in the UK and yeah, in the USA yeah, yeah. and in other countries yeah. because WHO's um, what they call strategic advisory group of experts they they will have to make a determination mm -hmm. we 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 here follow WHO recommendations very closely and we are waiting to see what we, here I'm talking about Pfizer and we're waiting to see what WHO makes of this all so right essentially they did initial um, research but in fact you're saying that we had in Trinidad, we have had lots of kids, so there's been lots of research before they come to do the, the vaccine with Trinidad. Well, exactly. Yeah. That yeah. by the time the WHO says yes to that, right. I suspect right. we would have had not only that clinical trial, yeah. but the exp experience of the, um, you, of, the you know, yeah. uh, uh, rolling yeah. out this vaccine to American kids and other right. kids all over the world. So we're safe in Trinidad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So I, and, and we also mm -hmm. um, we're hearing a lot about Pfizer, but Sinopharm has been doing a lot of work right, in this age group yeah. and they are I think it's from three up. Yeah, yeah. And um, that, yeah. you know, I that that has been ruled out or has been trialed as far as I know in a number of Asiatic countries. So yeah. we, we need to hear about that. That would be interesting. Well as, well. Well, as you mentioned, yeah. um, as you mentioned, Sinopharm. It jumps in it segues into another myth. Mm -hmm. um, well it's not a myth, it's a question that someone has in terms of they hearing about this third shot and then boosters to come and they're wondering should they be like what we, what we would know as Thanos and just collect all the vaccines <laughs> all the different brands so they, they're totally covered or if they just go back with the same brand that they had before well I, again we have a, a lot of choice of vaccines and they are different in the way they are formulated now the Sinopharm is what we call a, a inactivated or killed virus vaccine and in some ways, what it does not do, which the, um, the, the AstraZeneca or even the um, Pfizer does, is it doesn't get into cells. It's killed, it cannot invade cells. The immune system takes it up, the immune cells take it up and, and deal with it. But that inability to invade cells <laughs> does lead to fewer some side effects probably, yeah. but it means that you have to keep reminding the, system, the immune system a little bit more. So what, you know, it's like everything else. We started off with the Wuhan strain and, and two, 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 uh, when they did their clinical trials, two doses seem to give a lot of protection. Mm -hmm. We are, it, it, our knowledge is evolving, yeah, but yeah. we do know mm -hmm. that with that kind of vaccine, which is what polio is, we give children at two months, at four months, at six it's months, mm -hmm. and then we hit it at, 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 system, at, um, yeah. at about four years, yeah. right? Sure. So with that particular kind of vaccine, yeah. that's the way it works, and that's yeah. what you have to anticipate. Right. For the so, but for the boosters, as Rob was asking, so okay. you're saying makes for Sino, yeah, mix it or not? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> interesting. Um, now, uh, the, bo the boosters, uh, they, certainly they, there's a lot more data emerging that um, ha having certain, uh, certain um, vaccines, but in a particular way, for example, AstraZeneca followed by a messenger RNA, be it Pfizer or Moderna, okay. gives you good, very good immunity than mm -hmm. if you gave two, two, two Pfizer or two AstraZeneca. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that it doesn't work the other way around. Right. If you say the, okay. the Pfizer and, and then give the AstraZeneca. Oh. So this is why we really have to see what right. emerges over the over, over the, the next the, couple know, months and, well, and well, years. you know well months i mean the the science is moving at such a yeah, rapid, rapid pace, pace. Warp, warp speed pace all right speed. uh in terms of rapid pace we want to slow down your pace a little bit as we jump inside our mindfulness moment <laughs> Hi, and welcome to your mindful moment. Today, I want to talk to you about taking five. So when we feel things are really, really stressful, that can be any time in front of a test, an exam, online school, just in daily living. This can remind us of how to use our breath powerfully to calm us down and help us focus. So to do this, you hold your hand up, this and giving five and we're going to take the index finger of the other hand and as we move up each finger we're going to breathe in and as we go down we breathe out good job so breathe in and out and in again and out one more time good job the last time in and out Really good job. So this is a good tool to have just before a test or just when you feel you really need to focus. It gets our mind focused and lets us know we're not in danger. 
using your breathing like this can be a really important tool to tell your nervous system to be here now. All right, we slowed down your day a bit, made you relax as we had our mindfulness moment. You're good, JP? Good, good, All right, good, good, you're good, good to go, yeah. you're good to go. We have the prophet us on set and we're busting these myths here. <laughs> and another myth is coming your way. What about babies? Well, actually, babies haven't done very well when they get COVID. It, 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 if anything, they have got more severe illness and they have, um, and, and they have been deaths, all right? Certainly, mothers who have been vaccinated give their babies antibodies, all right? Which is, it's so mothers who might have been vaccinated in pregnancy, mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons they want to give pregnant women um, the vaccination because women have, pregnant women have been getting more severe disease. Mm. And also when you make an immune response, your, um, some of your antibodies will pass across the placenta to the baby, particularly in the last trimester, the last three months. And also to, with the breast milk, you will also give some antibodies which will protect the infant's um, um, gut, the, the new infant. Because they have been, they, babies can get very severe infection. Right. Um, and, and so um, it, it's, it's a group you, you want uh, to, to protect. And uh, I, one good way of protecting is by immunizing the mother. But that is true from mother to baby. Yeah. So that if we give any vaccines to children 5 to 11, why not give the vaccine to the babies themselves? Well, now they're beginning to, to, to give a vaccine to an infant. But every time you go down in age, you have to be just that little bit more careful. Mm -hmm. Work out the right dose. You know what I mean? Sure. You, what sort of side effects will you get? You know, where's their immune system? Because the immune system is still evolving. It's, 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 it's very interesting. People see a baby creeping and then learning to walk. But, and they think, okay, that's the nervous system developing. But that's true of the immune system. It's quite immature, and mm -hmm. it is developing during the first year to two years of life. So you have to kind of understand what you're doing and, and work it out very well. So that's why for a lot of things, tetanus, a lot of things, right. you give baby protection by immunizing the mom. Ah. Sure, yeah. So it's a problem. one thing though, I mean, you know, not so much a myth room, but do you, what do you think about the vaccine uptake so far in Trinidad? Were you surprised by the, well, less than 50%? What do you think about that? Well, I mean, I, I, I can appreciate to some extent why the general public might still be a little, uh, uh, you know, uncertain because what they have been accustomed to is very the certainty of science right. and what they are participating in is real-time science yeah. and real-time evolution of information and it's exciting so, for me but not for them love it love it love it we get it love it love it we just want this to be over and done with we want christmas we want animal we want life no. We can do without the excitement. No, I the no. excitement we want. Yeah, Not yeah. Us. <laughs> because of academia, oh my God. Yeah, you oh read yes, the stuff. Oh yes, it's so just yes. the most yeah. exciting period Absolutely. ever. Absolutely. I tell you, we'll go ahead yeah. seriously. Yeah. Um, so, I, so I can appreciate why the general public is, you know, so many stories. Everything is changing from day to day, week to week. You, you can appreciate that because it is, science is evolving. Yeah. And, and it's real time science we're living yeah. in. And, but I have been disappointed by my healthcare colleagues and the failure of, of many of them to, to, to take the vaccine. And, and while I appreciate that people can have concerns, you know, it's, it's, it, there's no doubt the, the people are, are more conservative versus less conservative, you know. I will pick up and move to a different country at the drop of a hat. That's, that, that will upset a lot of people, <laughs> you know. Um, so there's a lot of variation in how quickly people change. But at the end of the day, healthcare professionals look after others. And we truly are our brother's keepers. Sure. And we have to do our best to be our brother's keepers. And I always used to tell everybody who worked with me, medical students, nurses, other you know, colleagues, if you uh, could potentially harm someone, mm -hmm. then you need to think hard. And, sure. and if you are not vaccinated and you're looking after sick people who may not be COVID, COVID positive on the ward, but you could give them the infection, even at a greater rate, they would say, well, vaccinated can transmit. That's true. But unvaccinated transmit higher levels and for longer time. You, you are a danger to that person. And would you want your mother or father in the ward? Answer is no. So therefore, you should not be looking after anybody if that is the danger that you perceived. For In your fact, one of our mandates, I'm sorry about that, mm -hmm. is that do no harm. So we saw like vow 
to do no harm when we start medical school and nursing school. So right. yeah. Do so if yeah, so like if that. we if we actually not vaccinating, we have to be thinking, are we also following that do no harm? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very recently, two different companies, one in the UK, one in the US, both claim that they have this um, pill mm -hmm. that could reduce the, the severity of COVID-19 in positive patients. A lot of people on the ground are saying, well, okay, seeing that they have a tablet coming that can basically cure COVID, then there's no need to take the vaccine. No, I, I, I don't think that that's how they're seeing it. As far as I know, the, the pill that Merck is ro rolling out in the UK has just been taken up is really to decrease the, the, the severity or the progression to a more severe disease. <laughs> There's nothing quite like vaccination. Eh? Mm -hmm. you, you're sh effectively, what you're doing is you're showing, you're educating your immune system to recognize that virus. No pill does that. No mm -hmm. pill does that. All right? Um, so other than the vaccination pills that the Israelis, but we come to that. But um, so if you're not showing your immune system a bit of that virus, they're not going to be able to recognize it. Mm -hmm. What these pills are trying to do is that they may decrease the amount of, um, of once the, 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 the cells have become um, uh, infected, they might stymie or, or control their level of, of progression of the the virus multiplication and moving into mm. other cells and affecting other cells. But um, the Brits are not seeing it as an alternative to vaccination. To vaccination. Yeah, so not not, so even, let's, let's not deal, even a little bit. Let's <laughs> deal with that one, that, that one time as yeah. we wrap today's show. Thank you very much, Prof. With that one, you would hear from herself, right? The pill <laughs> is not the substitute for vaccination. Exactly. And this is what the, the Ministry of Health, yeah. um, the WHO, everyone is still pushing that, that, that theory of get vaccinated, right guys? So we wanna thank you very much for joining us here on Homefront. Thank you very much, JP. Yeah, right. Thank you very much, Prof. You're and you can send your stories as to why you were vaccinated. Yeah. And we also want you to keep on sending those donations as we get them rolling into pedcares.org. My name is Rome. Thank you very much for joining us right here on Homefront. <laughs> yeah, because I know people saying that well, you still come in, so. Baby Boomer. <laughs> it's Barbara. I'm not talking to you. She's telling me about Fallon. I said, You can't use that. Nah, that's an XY something. That's an XY.